A lot of us grew up believing At any moment we could lose it all And at the drop of a hat God might turn his back and move on So today we are doing episode number four in my series of Singing Lies to God. We're going to be focusing on one hipster doofus, Ryan Stevenson. Of course, mandatory in the end times is a V-neck tight t-shirt with skinny jeans and all the other Carl Lentz look-alike imitation type things. Um, Drew, you're being me. Yeah, maybe I am. Uh, but here we go. The important thing is, it has always been my, cont my contention that even in the so-called Christian music realm, they are in fact teaching you doctrine. And a lot of people think that just because the song made you cry, well, it must be true. You've seen this with Lauren Daigle. Many testified about her and her music made people cry. So they say they came back to Jesus, yet they've never cracked their Bible open at all. And so what I do is I'm going to compare what this guy says in his very popular song called No Matter What. And we're going to hold it up against the truth of Holy Scripture and see if it's able to stand on its own in, uh, you know, in other words, abiding in the truth of Jesus Christ. So let's get started with that. All right, so we're in the book of 2 Corinthians chapter 11, coming down to verse 13. For such are false apostles, deceitful workers, transforming themselves into the apostles of Christ. There is deception out there. Well, how do you know? Well, because the Bible tells you. It goes on, and no marvel, for Satan himself is transformed into an angel of light. Therefore, it is no great thing if his ministers also be transformed as the ministers of righteousness, whose end shall be according to their works. The, it, I'll give you a, exactly what this is saying. It is not any big marvel here. It's, it's not surprising is what Scripture is telling you. That number one, Satan transforms himself into an angel of the light. And it's not surprising, it's no great thing that his ministers do also. But people act like this doesn't happen. And it, could it be possible that these, these artists, these Christian artists are deceiving you? They just can't fathom that. But the fact of the matter is the majority of them are doing this and you're eating it up. You think because a song made you cry? that it's true? Feelings aren't gonna get you saved. Abiding in the truth of Jesus Christ will get you saved. Question every word you hear in every song. Now, like every good deception, there is truth mixed in with lies. Some of these lyrics are okay, let's go through it. A lot of us grew up believing at any moment we could lose it all, and at the drop of a hat, God might turn his back and move on. A lot of us feel like we blew it, thinking that we were just too far gone, but I want you to know that there's always hope for you now. Nothing wrong with that. Very good. We've all felt like that. Then he goes on, he says, no matter what you've done, you can't erase his love. I would not disagree with that. If you're coming to Christ and expecting a regeneration to be transformed, yes. He goes on and says, nothing can change it. You're not separated. This is where the problem comes in. He's telling you, that no matter what you do, literally the name of the song, by the way, is no matter what, you're not separated. This is a once saved, always saved doctrine. Is it true that no matter what you do, nothing can separate you? Well, let's take a look at the Word of God. All right, so we're in the book of Matthew 6, and I want you to look at this as though we were in a court of law. I'm going to prove to you that he says, no matter what you do, there is no separation from God. Let's go through some scripture and test this. Jesus himself says, but if you forgive not men their trespasses, neither will your father forgive your trespasses. So Ryan says, no matter what you do, you're not separated. But Jesus said, look at this. You got to forgive your brother. What if you don't forgive your brother? Well, guess what? Your father's not going to forgive you. How does that hold up? That's number one. If you come over to 1 Corinthians, we're in chapter 6, let's start in verse 9. Know ye not that the unrighteous shall not inherit the kingdom of God? Be not deceived, neither fornicators or 
idolaters, nor adulterers, nor the effeminate, or abusers of himself of mankind, thieves, covetous, drunkards, revilers, nor extortioners shall inherit the kingdom of God. So here again, Ryan and Bart tell you nothing can separate you. But here, quite frankly, it gives you a whole list of things. Again, in our Holy Scripture, these things tell you that you will not inherit the kingdom of God. And notice what it doesn't say here. It does not preface this with, oh, unless you've been previously saved. It doesn't say that. It says, period, the unrighteous shall not inherit the kingdom of God. Now, if you want to find out if anything separates you from God, be unrighteous. And you'll find out real fast if it separates you from God. A lot of people are going to disagree with me, and that's fine. I'm going to trust the word of God, and I'm going to abide in the doctrine of Jesus Christ. And I'm not going to listen to another one of Satan's ministers tell you, go ahead and just do whatever you want. Don't worry. Nothing can separate you from God. Now, Right off the bat, I'll also head off a common response I get. If you are abiding in God, in Jesus Christ, of course nothing can separate you. And God will never let you go. Nothing can separate you. But you have a choice. You can certainly walk away from God. He doesn't force you to stay. That's the difference. Real quick, if you abide in God, nothing can separate you. If you choose not to abide in God and you choose to go out and start being unrighteous, which again, a couple of real good examples here, you're going to find yourself separated from God very fast. So much so, in fact, that it tells you, you shall not inherit the kingdom of God. Look at this verse right here, 2 John 1, 9, one of my absolute favorites, absolutely shatters the once saved, always saved doctrine. Whosoever transgresseth and abideth not in the doctrine of Christ hath not God. He that abideth in the doctrine of Christ, he hath both the Father and the Son. A couple of things here. Abideth. What does it mean by abideth? If you come over, I'm going to show you. We are in the Blue Letter Bible, the Strong's. 2 John 1, 9. Whosoever transgresseth and abideth. Right here. Let's click on that. Here's the Greek word meno. What does it mean? Abide to remain. It is up to you to remain in Christ, to dwell. Not understanding that yet? To continue. You mean you have to continue in Christ all your life? Yes, you do. To tarry. Look, to endure. Further breaks it down to remain, abide, to sojourn, tarry. Look at not to depart. Is it possible for you to walk away from God and depart from Him? Absolutely. How do you know? Here's the proof. Holy Scripture. It says, by the way, here's a warning. If you sin, transgresseth means if you sin and choose to not tarry, not continue in the doctrine of Christ, guess what? You don't have God. But here is the good news. If you continue and remain, as we just saw the definition, in the doctrine of Christ, he hath both the Father and the Son. Let me ask you just to further expand on this. What do you think happens to you if you hath not God? Where do you think you're going to wind up? I'll leave that up to you to discern. But in coming back to the lyrics now, here is what the Bart Millard, Ryan Stevenson doctrine tucked in within a song is telling you, hey, don't worry. You're going to be just fine. Go do whatever you want. Nothing's going to separate you from God. Now, again, I say, it is not God that lets go of you. It is you letting go of God. I would also add, I'm shocked to see how much this doctrine is preach sung within the songs today. But let's look at some of the other lyrics here as we continue. Run to the cross and be free. Okay, very true. No matter, look at here it goes again. No matter what you've done, you can't erase his love. Is this true? I think we're seeing that that just is a lie. But people love to hear it because it tickles their ears. 
And they, they literally say within themselves, you mean I can just live however I want? And I'm just, I'm going to heaven? Wow. Here he says, nothing can change it. <laughs> How is this song lyrics? Is this a worship song? No, this is literally teaching you a false doctrine and you're singing it to a nifty little tune. Goes on, you're not separated. This is like the lie told in the Garden of Eden. Did God really tell you not to eat the fruit? Oh, Eve, you're so naive. That's not what he meant. You know, you have a choice. You're going to believe these hipster doofus artists who have been sent as ministers of Satan to deceive you, or are you going to believe the word of God? He's always holding on. Is this true? I think we see in scripture many, many times that that is not true. Here's one more in Matthew 24. Look what Jesus said. Well, look at, start in verse 11. And this, of course, has to do with the end times. And many false prophets shall rise and shall deceive many. And because iniquity shall abound, the love of many shall wax cold. But he that shall endure unto the end, the same shall be saved. Well, what's the implication here if you don't endure, endure unto the end? Will you still be saved? No, that wouldn't make sense. Here's exactly what it's saying. If you endure to the end, you'll be saved. Very easy to, to discern that if you don't endure, you're not going to be saved. Now, if you argue differently, you're in denial. Don't take it up with me, though. Do the exposure video on Jesus because you're really calling him a liar, not me. And by the way, one more thing. If you don't think endurance is a condition to your salvation, go read the letters to the churches uh, as, as given in the book of Revelation. I believe it's seven or eight times throughout the letters that Jesus himself, again, tells you that you must endure in order to be saved, which, again, we see is to continue to remain in Christ. That's why I expose this music. It is false doctrine. It says no matter where you run. What if I'm running to sin, whether I'm murdering, whether I'm committing adultery, whether I'm just living like a devil however I want. Here he's telling you, don't worry, it's okay. He's always holding on. It's absolute false. You must remain and endure. He goes, I don't know what you've been taught. I don't know what you've been told. Well, for me, I can answer you, Ryan. I've been taught out of Holy Scripture. Look at this deception. He says, all I know is my God. Who is your God, Ryan? It's not the God of the Bible. But he says, my God will never let go of you. No, and I don't know what you've seen, don't know what you've been through. All I know is my God will never let go of you. Now, again, if you're abiding in Jesus Christ, it's true. But if you choose to stray, to walk away from God, it's not him letting go of you. It's going to happen, though. You will be separated. This song is pure deception. So I'll wrap up this video with this. Knowing that Satan, who has brilliantly used the tool of music to deceive the nations, wow, what a tool music is. Man, he brought you the Beatles. Led Zeppelin, the Stones, Motown, name it. Satan has deceived the world with music. Why should it be any surprise that he brought this same tool of music and crossed over into contemporary Christian music with the express intent of deceiving you? And he gets you, he, he makes these songs that make you cry and they give you tingles and you just suppose that that's the truth because it's labeled under Christian music. Wake up. Clever deception coming your way. For those of you that love Jesus Christ in all truth and sober-mindedness, God bless you, and we'll talk to you soon.